What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. So before we continue back to Mensis, first we need to warp on over to the Cathedral Ward and grab something. Now we don't actually have to do this this second. It's just the earliest we can do this is after having taken out uh, the previous boss. So with, uh, with him down, no more Mikalash also means no more lady that was sitting over here. So instead, what you got to do is run this way. Not getting any any blood anymore. And go down. It can't be. This is a nightmare. She gave birth to that. So anyway, you gotta kill her, you get the one-third of umbilical cord from him, you get the shoes from her. Um, also, fun fact, if you look at the dress she's wearing, it is the same as the noble dress that we got in Castle Canehurst, worn by the nobles of the old bloodline that traces back to Forsaken Castle. Look closely at her outfit. Dun, dun, dun! Yeah, so anyway, um, with that, we are on our way to go get our third one-third umbilical cord. Now, do not eat them yet. I said it a while ago. I'll say it again. Do not eat them. If you, unless you want to have to do New Game Plus for your platinum, do not be gobbling those up. This next part gets um, not too bad, but make sure you have your Frenzy Rune on. We're going to be going up against some Winter Lanterns, and if you don't have your Frenzy Rune on, you're going to be in for a bad time. Oh my god. I'm 50 short of a level. Hang on. Well, what? Very well. All right, it's looking good. Farewell, good. I might start hunter. focusing on vitality again. I'm gonna want the the extra health uh, for the DLC. We're also coming up on one of the best farming routes in the entire game. Uh, so anyway, up here, first thing we're doing is kill some abominations in the corner. And pick up them chunks. Still don't know if I actually wanted to use my thing that I leveled all the way up. I know there's a bunch of enemies this way. Ignore them for now. This is also a shortcut to the boss. Ignore that for now. Instead, we want to get on this, and this will go all the way down at the very bottom. Uh, but instead, we want to get off. So you can see this window right here. Oh god, no! No! Are you shitting me, game? Oh my god. I swear I had that lined up. So anyway, it, it connects. That's the platform that's right before Mikolash. Um, it connects to it. That is not what I, I wanted to happen. We were supposed to be able to get off. I don't know what is going on. Ever since, uh, it, you, know what, you know what the real problem is? Ever since I went out of order, I was following my, my guide that I wrote. And ever since I was like, you know what? We're going to do Ebby now. And then we're going to go do Castle Canehurst later. Ever since I went out of order, I've just been having fuckery like that. That time I made it off. Anyway, uh, run on over here and pop this. Make sure you have sedatives ready to go. And now there's three of them in a row, and they're actually really, really good to farm. Uh, if you if you're not gonna dive all the way down into the chalice dungeons, this is the next best spot in the game in terms of loot farming. You're gonna blow through. Sedatives, but those cursed blood gems that they are dropping are pretty good. Uh, so let me see. Lantern, cold blood on the right, and then after the next two, there's some loot on a body. I was hoping they would be a little bit more split up. Let me try and lure one over. Another trick with them is if you lower your total insight, 
they'll actually be easier to kill. But even without lower lower insight, uh, there's the tempering on the body. The bullets were what we wanted. There's another curse gem. Uh, even without lowering the insight, as long as we have that that frenzy resist gem, you'll be fine fighting them. You're still gonna need to, to have um, what's called sedatives. Uh, but if you're farming them, you would ideally swap up to the ashen set. As you can see, 60 frenzy res versus 17 frenzy res. Uh, so that set's going to help out a ton, which actually just to show it, because we have another one coming up, I will put on the Ashen Hunter stuff. Uh, for the helmet, you would want to go for this guy. This is your, your Max Frenzy. He'll look goofy as hell, but anyway, kill these spiders. As you could say, they're the brothers and sisters of Patches. I assume brothers and sisters, unless they're all just brothers, but, you know, usually when they're all clones like that, there's probably a few females in the mix. And then go on down. Ignore the hole for now. Move on over here. You see that big brain thing over there? That is what was shooting you early on in the game. Kind of crazy to think that all we had to do was pull this lever and all of a sudden Mr. Brain is going to have a really bad time. Oh, he drops on out. A lot of similarities to Demon Souls, you know, the dropping of the stuff in the Tower of Latria. Anyway, drop down here though. Watch out for the Winter Lantern over there. Instead, we're going to kill these first. Alrighty, and then I believe there's something... Ow, oh, stop that. Check my notes here, just to make sure. Um, let's see. Kill the spiders, hit the lever. I had to drop the big eye, drop on the floor, kill two spiders first, then crawl some winter lantern, get the chest. Head outside for some loot. Camera jolted a little bit there. So you can see with the frenzy set, I may be able to survive even with the dead. We'll see. Nope. Still not enough. Damn. Yeah, that's why frenzy's not fun though. Look how much damage that did. It's insane. I would open one. So you pop this open though, you should get an achievement for the final art, the choir bell. Another decent utility one, mainly used for co-op. Uh, pretty decent. What it does is when you when you pop it. Uh, it does it cost seven bullets, but it's basically like a big old, big old heal, boosting up everybody. So, pretty nice stuff. Pretty nice indeed. Um, and then from here, we typically warp, I believe. Let me see. Head outside for some loot, shit ton of wisdom, two arcane gems, get all that before dropping. No, we head out, we head out that way. Um, let me, let me cross right here. All right, and this is where we get our blood rock. Great one's wisdom, arcane damp. Great one's wisdom. Great one's wisdom. Great one's wisdom. Um, bum bum bum. Batman's knowledge. I want to say there's another arcane damp. Damn blood tinge. And then this is a useless shortcut. Um, this will connect us back through to Mikolash area. Just to kind of show where this is at. Walk in here. See, this is, uh, this is where all the Mikolash stuff went down. It's a really odd shortcut, you know? Um, but anyway. More importantly. Hold on up. 
And I can actually go back to my... And the blindfold cap actually doesn't look half bad. What are we looking at, stat-wise? You are... Mm, weaker arcane and fire resist. Better bolt. Better beast hood. Yeah, let's just do it. We're night, man. That's fine. Um, so yeah, take a quick loop. Make sure you got it all. And then come on over here and just drop down. And there it is. The one and only blood rock in the base game. Back in the day, man. Or back when Bloodborne first came out, it was obnoxious because that was it. You got just that blood rock and the only way to get more was to dive deep, deep, deep into the chalice dungeons. Um, we're putting on... I want a lantern on for this next part. Not a lantern, but torch. Um, and we're just going to run all the way back over to where we were fighting the big mamas. We're going to run past them. We're running for that elevator that's over there now. Can't really see my there it is. It's, it's pretty hard to see down here. But you just gotta look around and you should be able to find the eye. Uh, once you find the eye, pull up your thing and go to make contact and use it. And then just set down your controller. You need to stand in front of the eye and do this for a, a while. Actually, it's like 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, and then you're gonna get a rare material that you would need for chalice dungeons, which technically we don't need, but covering that it's here uh, and then after that we're going to kill the eye to get a rune hanging out any minute now Still waiting. I swear this actually works. There we go. I got to finally turn. There's the moon rune. And now that we got the moon rune, we can kill this thing. It takes a while to kill, but uh, just keep whacking away at it. Not what I meant to do. Done almost no transform attacks this entire playthrough. All right, and we got the living string. Um, so now that we're done, I would highly recommend you just use a bold hunter's mark and warp out of here. Otherwise, you're going to that, going up, taking an elevator, shooting across. That's a whole bunch of bullshit you don't want to do. But after killing both the uh, the brains, in addition to getting the blood rocket, it's time to maximum pimp out our weapon. Oh, 
whether you're using the Hudley Blade or something else, you will have it up at plus 10 now. I'm gonna get rid of a couple things first here too. I have a lot of... I don't, I don't know, I just, I, I very much dislike having stuff that I'm not using. I'm like, oh, you're taking up space, can't have you. Alright, let's see what we got. Physical 18 stays. There should be like two, there's the physical 18. No, wait, that one goes into the other slot. Hang on. I swear to God, I missed a physical 18 somewhere, I feel like. Physical 19 and attack beasts down. Tempered damp. Radiant. That goes there. Weapon durability down is manageable. I'm gonna have to check the notes. I swear to God there should be... No, I do have two two physical attack 18s, and I thought there was a third one. But this does seem correct. Is I can put one into... Uh, just have 18, 18, and then the other one was accursed. I think that's what we were doing as well. Um, so 10% weaker versus beasts or durability. Blunt attack up to 28. What's my durability on this? 250? Oh yeah, we'll take a durability hit. Even with that durability hit, this thing will be plenty. <laughs> Me and my flame spray here. Welcome. Very well, let And back to the middle. I'm gonna see something real fast. Is it 18% physical blood gem? Was it those two? I see. Do, do, do. Tier 3. Down on the dungeon by the werewolf boss. Tier 5 is in Yargul. We got that. Rating 14. No, yeah. Okay, so we, we didn't miss one. That is correct. The rest were in the chalice. Anyway, uh, back on task, though. Move my notes here. So we are ready to just head over to Murgo's Wet Nurse. There's a couple farms we can do, but nothing that's um, vital importance. Of course, you can just go down and farm them. What you get from them is random. It could be a durability down. It could be attack down versus beast. It could be any number of things. Couple shadows of Yarnum. The hell? Oh, I am dumb. Oh, this is making up for my shitty parries against the Garius. It's amazing what like a nice recording break will do for you. We are coming up on the best farm in the game. Oh, nope. Messed that up a little bit. Swing in here. Uh, now, as for doing this farm, there is... Well, we had 18 minutes. Let me go through and kill Murgo, and then if I have time, I'll show a full, full-blown example of it. Uh, but the basic gist of this farm is to run up behind this pig, charge up, hit the pig and visceral it. And then we're going to go ahead... There's two more pigs, but look how many souls I get. 9,450 from that one pig. And there's two more pigs over here. I'm gonna get the piggy to notice me. Oh god, no, wrong thing. I wanted to auger. Oh god, no, it's all going to shit. Let me out, pigs, let me out. Auger to the butt. I 
Anyway, this is the, the best farm. It's killing these three pigs. Uh, now, there's a, a couple different things you can do with the pigs, though. What you can actually do is if you don't want to just fight the pigs outright, it, it takes a little bit more time, but you can go on over this way. And you can see there's a whole gaggle of, uh, of these dudes. And they will have a mortal combat with the pigs. So you could have the pigs fight against these guys. And then you just, you know, lap up all of the things that come from the pigs. Come from the battles. Um, usually it's about 50-50. You'd think the that these guys would do a lot of damage, but they're very squishy. So the pigs tend to, to tear them up quite well, actually. And so, I mean, we're killing them in three hits, you know. Not very strong. Uh, but there are two routes here as well. So even though we came all the way up, there is a lower route, which if you are playing the game uh, online for your first time, you should go this way first because right on over here, there's typically a bell maiden. The kind of bell maiden that you need to... Whoa! Oh my god! He killed me! Holy shit. Well, now I get to show you the lower path with the farm. But there's usually a bell maiden right down there. So you would go uh, lower path to kill her first. I will say it might just be that the end of the game is harder because that's where, I mean, most of my deaths are now happening because we're at the end. Uh, but for the farm, you'd want to put on moon. And in particular, I would actually suggest the bonus echoes from Visceral over just straight moon runes. Because the, the moon, I want to say moon is like 5, 10, 15 in terms of the uh, boost you get to your echoes. Whereas the uh, Visceral one, uh, this one will, we'll, we'll kill this one here. This one dies because he's just right here on the passive and waiting for you. After you do him, you would drop down over here. And now this will lead right over here, so that's like where we picked up that loot where I accidentally ran down. But you can take this around as well, and it'll bring us back to where we were. Uh, but as I was saying, so I, ideal farm, you would put on um, the gain more blood echoes from Visceral, both the tier 3 and the tier 2, and then put on the tier 3 moon. And that should net you a lot. Um, we did the... I don't know if I put the the actual number down, but it's something like 60,000 almost per run. You get a lot. Sit down, Gumby. And if you do start off with the lower path... You can then come here, hit them, just to get their attention. Fight for my amusement! Yo, do they really abandon their friend? Yo, 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 guys. Hey, these pigs are your problem, not mine. Yes. Do battle for them. Nothing is doing what I want it to do. Whatever, we'll just kill them. Because the echoes, you get a big ass boost to the echoes you're getting. Big donk! Oh, my big donk missed. Anyway, after that, you can run on over this way. This is the Tumerian Queen. Kill her if you want, or leave her alive. Doesn't matter. 
she's sad because of, um... Well, I guess we come to the end of the game, uh, but to, to basically explain the lore and, and my understanding of the lore is that <clears throat> the, oh yeah, that's right, the Esophagus Blood. Um, and this, this gets better explained in the DLC. I guess if you're watching a walkthrough, this kind of gets given away regardless. Uh, but, so all the shit that went down in Bloodborne was basically due to humanity discovering, like, the old ones. And when people discovered the old ones, this is the, the very start shortcut, um, they, like, ended up killing the old one. So, to preserve humanity, they were tasked with birthing a, like, baby old one, essentially, and it was hers that, like, she was the queen of the kingdom or some shit, and they had her birth what would have been the next one, and that's what persisted the nightmare. That's my understanding of it. Um, that might be completely off base, I don't know. I don't do lore videos, y'all know that. But anyway, uh, head on up here. And up next we have Murgo's Wet Nurse. So, uh, this boss is... kind of a mixed bag. Uh, could be tricky for you, could be easy. Um, it is equally weak to Arcane Fire and Bolt. It will split into clones at some point. When it does, just stay locked on to the main one and try to smash her as fast as you can. We're actually gonna pop a beast blood pellet just for... just for shits and giggles here. Pretty cool cutscene too, we'll let this one play. Like a weird nightmarish thing that's here to protect the baby. Oh boy, holy shit. Yeah, you know, going in with the beast hood, probably not a good idea. I got, I got dunked on. To be honest, this build's too slow for beast hood. Beast hood's more of like a, uh, with my, uh, my beast cleaver. Goes good with the beast cleaver. You just take a lot of damage when beast hood is up, you know? And I'm kind of a slow, thick boy. Very much, um, you know, maximizing my slow thickness at the moment. I'll just fight her properly. I think we should be fine. It is interesting to see how uh, some of the bosses I'm struggling with a lot more than I would have thought I would. Like, I did not expect to die instantly to Murgo's Wet Nurse. It was, uh, just didn't think that was in the cards. In before I die like six times. Honestly, if I don't kill it here, though, I'm probably just gonna, um, I'll just chop the footage and edit it, because I don't want these videos to be like 35, 40 minutes. So after that attempt, I ended up actually getting my ass stomped, um, and I wanted to show, like, a proper strategy here. So as opposed to what happened back with Lugarius, I decided to just take a couple attempts until I had one that was, was clean and kind of showed all the mechanics. Uh, so on that note, I also grabbed my stuff and warped out and then spent it. This way I don't have 100,000 echoes on the line, so we're now at 2535. Uh, so Beast Blood does work well here. Going for any buff does work well here, whether it's going to be Empty, Phantasm, Lightning, Fire, whatever. Um, probably one of the biggest things is we want to dodge to the left, and we want to ideally stay behind it. So instead of going Oonga Boonga, we are just going with the one-handed version. This can actually work with the, uh, with the Beast Pellet since I'm not as slow as I would be otherwise. That's the most dangerous attack. As long as we can avoid that attack, we're usually pretty good. Let's see, just staying right here behind him. We're kind of in this sweet spot. Uh, if he gets up on a wall like that, just back up. Wait until his back's more exposed. All right, and he's gonna do Shadow Realm. Great, we can show this off. Uh, so when Shadow Realm happens, all you need to do, and this, you can actually attack him and kill him here too, so if he's really low, you can go for it. Otherwise, you're just going to walk along the level like this. 
just completely unlocked from the fight and just working counterclockwise. Uh, you'll have to do this for 30 seconds to a minute. And then after you're done, he will, well, not he, but Murgo will show back up and you can finish the fight. Um, just kind of one-on-one -on -one like you were before. So I'm just going to do this for a little bit. I don't know why this works. I think it's just the, the spawn points of them. They never spawn in at a point that can hit you. As you can see, we're not, we're not really dodging or anything. We're, we're speeding up a little bit just so I don't get stuck on anybody. But otherwise, we're just kind of cruising along. I don't know exactly what causes that. I don't know if anybody does. It's just sometimes Murgo will will do that. Sometimes she, she won't. Like in all these attempts, I actually I had one attempt where she literally just didn't do that, and she basically just sat there and ignored me the whole time while I wailed on her back. And uh, it was like almost a flawless kill. But I was like, well, I can't really just upload this and be like, yeah, guys, this is how you beat Murgo. Because um, that the shadow thing, whether or not she does that, that's honestly one of the biggest factors in how the fight's going to go. But otherwise, just stay behind her. was down um so like i said even in shadow form you can still kill her it's just all that bullshit that's on the screen will be attacking you so something to keep in mind the baby sounds creep the shit out of me just takes a second the fight's dead though the fight's over i don't know why it's just, it's just always, it takes uncomfortably long for it to end. Are you like, is it, is it over? Is it actually over? Did we win? Is this done? Uh, but so after that, with the Murgo down, we can now actually get quite a few of the endings. So warp on out. Um, I'm actually like almost out of items, so I'm probably going to buy a bunch of healing and a bunch of bullets with all those echoes I got. Uh, and we have all three of the uh, umbilical cords now, but do not use them just yet. In the next episode, we are going to be getting two of our endings and then showing a farming loop. So stay tuned, and I will cover that all soon enough.